Hello everyone, only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Uh, today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different. Um, today I'm going to be showing you um, a little bit more of the in-depth ins and outs of how the user interface works in the different mechanism machine mods. Um, so mechanism uh, mod itself has a lot of awesome machines uh, to make and create a lot of different components and simplify processes. But the user interface in the machine is something that a lot of people struggle with. Uh, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and how to work with that today. If you find the video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button. That way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. Uh, so today, um, as an example, I'm going to be using a pressurized reaction chamber, uh, which is one of the many machines in the mechanism mod. And uh, most of the interface for this machine is going to be uh, kind of the same. Uh, this front part here, this the first page when you first go in, is probably the part that's going to be different based on the machine you're going into. And it's, a lot, it's going to be pretty self-explanatory for most of the machines. Um, it's going to be the uh, sides and configurations and stuff that, that throw a lot of folks off. So we're going to kind of go into that. Um, up here in the upper right, you're going to see upgrades. If you click on upgrades, it's going to show down here the different types of upgrades that this device supports. If you make that upgrade and you insert it in this top right box, it will load down into the machine, which will either increase its speed, make it use less energy, make it quieter for muffling. So there's different ones that the machines can do. And you can stack those up to a certain amount depending on the machine. Uh, but that's a great way to get the most out of an individual machine. And then most of the screens are going to have this little arrow in the top left. You can click to go back to the previous screen. Down here in the left is your energy. By clicking on that, you can see the different types of energy that it'll run onto and how much it's using, um, RF being the most common used. The bottom right is whether or not you want to have um, your machine to be run by a specific redstone signal at low, high speed, or just disabled, which means it's on all the time, as long as it's got a power source. Um, this one here, the lock is security. Uh, clicking that just means that only I can use it. If we were on a server and other people were here, um, you can check it where only trusted people can use it, public anybody can use it, or only I can use it. Now over here in the side config is where things get a little confusing for folks. When we click on that, you're going to see here that there are this little grid. This is what throws off a lot of folks. Each one of these squares represents a different side of the machine. So this red one up here right now, when it says input currently, this is the top of the machine. So if we're looking at it, it's going to be the top side here is what it's referencing. Okay. The middle square is the front of the machine. We have the right side of the machine, the left side of the machine, the bottom of the machine, and this one here is the back of the machine. And by changing these, by clicking on them, you can say whether that side, from this situation, the back, is inputting, is an energy source, is it outputting, or pretty much none, um, if it's not needed. Uh, some of them will automatically come set, like this one here, input, output, and energy, automatically connected, even though I have power coming in from the back, it still auto sets to that. Now you're going to see that this says items configuration. So if this is producing an item, if I click auto eject, it'll turn eject to on, which means that any of the items being produced by this machine will auto eject outside of the side that is listed as an output. So if I have a storage connected, say an item extraction cable uh, going to a chest, then it will eject items produced out this side, the right side, into that extraction cable and into the storage unit that I have connected to it. Items means it's going to be physical items. Now on this machine here on the left, you'll see there's also energy and fluids. So if we click on fluids, we're back at the same type of menu again. The same top, front, left, right, bottom, and back. If I was using a machine like this one, which can create a fluid, the same situation. I can have it to fluid. I can have it um, auto eject right now I don't have any pipes or anything connected to it so it's not saying that there's anything in here to eject or that it can but it's set up in the same way 
and then energy is the exact same situation. Right now it's auto set for everything to be input, but if this was a machine that produced power, I could change that to an output or an input or none. So making sure whichever here, this one says energy, fluids, or items, that if you're configuring an item to go in or out, you wanna make sure you're messing with the item screen. If you're having a fluid coming in or out, you wanna make sure you're on the fluid screen. Okay. And then on the right here, you're going to see is gases, the exact same situation. Your machine produces gases, same configuration setup, be able to input or output gases from this machine. Now, a lot of the mechanism machines work together, creating certain gases and fluids when moving into a next machine will then create another product. So it's possible to link a lot of them up to make very um, automated and advanced um, materials such as more advanced gases, fluids, and materials. Um, but this little wheel of death here, this little squares, is the thing that throws off a lot of people remembering which one is which. So again, just a review, there's the top, front, left, right, bottom, and back. And as you can see up in the corner here, I have just a little diagram that's been up there for a while showing you those exact same things, just as a reminder. Then the arrow will take us back here again. Now, if we go into transponder configuration, that's a little bit more advanced, but again, the same basic setup for input and output, but that's for, like I said, really more advanced stuff, and, and we'll cover that at a later time when it becomes more useful, but there's not a lot that really need this, but it's the same basic setup if you want to have transponder input or output with the configuring to the right sides. Okay, so you can do blue, blue, you can link up your outputs by choosing the colors and then choosing the squares of your choice. But other than uh, that, like I said, the front screen here is going to have a little bit of uh, different stuff depending on the machine you're using. Um, but it's the, the, the menus that I went over today are pretty consistent across most of the machines. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is this little item I have down here, which is a configurator. If you have a configurator and you hold it over a side, you can see the color that's matching. You can also change, see it says output dark blue. You can change some of these settings as well just by right clicking with the configurator. Now that's a way to do it, but in my opinion it's a lot slower and you got to go around and figure out which one's which and you definitely can't see the bottom. Uh, so it's much easier just to get in and mess with it in the menus itself. All right, uh, but that's the basic um, controls of the user interface in mechanism machines. Um, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please be sure to throw those down in the comments. I'm always happy to answer those as quickly as I can, as well as if you have any other suggestions or recommendations for other tutorials that you'd like to see in Minescra Minecraft Sky Factory 4. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. Uh, but that's going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.